museum without walls. Every corner of our capital city tells a story, and it's not just about black history. We got an old building with four walls. It's telling our incredible story. Every once in a while, you find a nut, in this case, an acorn that hasn't fallen far from history. There it is, the mighty acorn, which sat atop the state house when George Washington was president, brought down in 1996 and out of our view ever since, until now. You can find it resting at the historic Annapolis Museum. I was nervous, small town, small nonprofit, small staff, small budget. How does, that, does this not end up looking homemade? No, this is Annapolis made. It is a building of beauty. And it's more fabulous than you ever could have imagined it. Your eyes are gonna swell with pride. Annapolitans have never seen anything like this in their city. Your eyes will swell with tears on losing our friends at the Capitol. Remembered with this Pulitzer. And remember um, the story of the Capitol Gazette and the wonderful uh, members of that staff. The years roll by, the centuries roll by as you simply twirl for answers. Some of the wealthiest people in Annapolis at the start of the Civil War were free blacks. They were running successful businesses. They had beautiful, elegant homes on Church Circle. You can twirl historic moments like the 64 sit-in at Barnes. This represents uh, the Civil Rights Movement yeah. uh, in Annapolis. So Annapolis was a segregated community. Mm -hmm. Here in the museum, we focus on segregation in uh, education. We look at segregation in entertainment and in medical care. And then we look at how the community voices its protests and demands change. Go up each flight of cranky steps with Mary Angela Hardwick, the genius of this place. She'll show you stuff you never knew about that's right under your feet. Um, and this area here. So much of this room um, is history that was brought forth by the community. So the images and the objects are things that were shared with us. When we went and talked to families and said, tell us about your family's story in Annapolis. It's amazing to experience what this city has been through. I've always been a proud Annapolitan, and I always wanted to somehow tell that story. And to think, if Tom Jefferson stood at this spot, looked out this window, he'd say, where are ye horses? Other than that, nothing has changed, but we have. The community coming and saying, our story's finally being told. Eris T. Allen, sure, we get off his boulevard, but do we know he was a doctor who was married to the first female African-American doctor in Anne Arundel? This was her bag. Alexander Hamilton in Annapolis. Uh, of course, everybody loves Alexander Hamilton, yeah. so of course we have to shout out the fact that he was here in 1781. The pictures you see are friends you know from events you lived through. We see and witness Annapolitan pride. It just explodes. People say, this is my town, this is my city, this is my history. Every day's a day at Cars Beach, You'll learn about Annapolis, Harlem, up on Clay Street. Duke Ellington, uh, Pearl Bailey, Ella Fitzgerald, um, and so it got the nickname Annapolis Harlem. You'll meet the first Annapolis female police officer who had to wear a skirt to the first woman to attend the Naval Academy. And we, we respected everybody who's grown up here over the uh, centuries. And you see as you walk through, amazing sort of side tales told. You'll be challenged to find another city that can brag that its four signers of the Declaration of Independence still have homes standing to this day. The greatest compliment of all, though, is hearing that this place got it right. Tell the story of all of us, all of our history, in one spot. In a building fit for a king, or at least as old as the last one who sailed away right across the street, this is for you, Annapolis. This is for all of us. This is our story.